Mark Grace and Gracie the Swan are honored today on a lovely day for baseball. The Cubs lead the wild card by a game over the Mets, and they're hopeful of seeing Sammy Sosa hit number 61 today. I don't know about you, partner, but when I was filling out my scorecard today, I got a shiver when I saw Sammy Sosa with 60 home runs and 145 batted in. It's hard to believe that we would ever see a Chicago Cub player with 60 home runs. Not only that, but 60 home runs with still 13 games to go. And Sammy has got a great shot chip. We'll get into it later, but I wrote down some of his numbers against pitchers that he will probably see in San Diego. And they're staggering. So he's got a good shot in that four game series. No doubt about that one. And again, you think about the names that Sammy Sosa joins with that 60 home run total. It really is incredible. The Cubs have won 84 games or more three times in a single season. The 01. Swung, hit hard. Fina can't handle it. It's in the right field. Traxel scores. Jose around second. He's on his way to third. Bernitz bobbled the ball. Gray slides in under the tag. And the Cubs have the lead. Mark Grace with a double. He drives home run number 82. The Cubs have put three on the board in the third. And now with first base open, do you pitch to Sammy Sosa? As Mark Grace hits this ball awfully hard. If Vina comes up with it, it's two. Instead, it was two, but the two was a double. And Mark Grace with an upending slide at second base on some daring base running. Mark Grace leads off the Cubs fifth. And you can almost feel a buzz of anticipation with Sammy in the on deck circle waiting to hit next. Grace lines it over short. A leadoff single in a three run game and the no hitter is over in Arizona. Sean Casey singled with one out to spoil Andy Bennis's bid. So here is Sammy in the fifth. have his groove back. He's fly to right, he's walked, he scored a run. Cubs with a three-run lead looking for more. The pinch is through there for a strike. Sosa has hit 49 of his 60 home runs against right-handed pitching. man Mr. Bill Murray looking on rooting for 61. The 01. Swung and built it. There it goes. Number 61. Move over Maris.
Well, Chip, it went by the yellow building. It would have gone through one of the windows, but it went way down the street. And Sammy's driven in 147 with his 61st home run. A monstrous shot. The straightaway left field. Sammy Sosa is one behind Mark McGuire. So it's Sammy Sosa, Roger Maris, and Mark McGuire as the only three men hit 61 or more. Unbelievable. Glenn Allen Hill pops it up. It's 0-2 to him. And there was no doubt about that ball. He absolutely crushed it. The pop, then the hop. And the only other question was, where would the ball stop? And, folks, he's got a couple more swings left in him today. And a huge series coming up in San Diego against a stamp and in a ballpark that he just loves. Hill with a base hit to left. Well, how far did she go? Let's take another look. It's out over the plate, and Sammy got every bit of this. He knows it's gone when it left the bat. So does everybody else as the fans spring to their feet. It was a monstrous, towering home run by the building. Look at the fans leap to their feet as they know it's 61 for Sosa. Wow. And it's an 8-3 game now. <laughs> Anything less than 500 happy feet. And we would have shorted Sammy Sosa. I just can't believe that we got two guys in the span of a week of both at 61 or greater. And still, and still a long counted. way to That's go. That's right. Guy Eddie. Did he go around? Yeah, he did. Well, with Bill Murray on hand, National League pitchers, when they see McGuire and Sosa, they're saying, it's Groundhog Day, as everybody keeps doing the same thing to him, hitting long home runs. Well, they walked him intentionally in the third. And they pitched to him in the fifth, and it cost him two runs. Sammy now is sneaking up on Juan Gonzalez for the major league lead in runs batted in. Sammy with 147. Folks, you're looking at the National League most valuable player. I don't know if he's going to win that vote, but that is the National League most valuable player. And Stoney, you're looking at a guy that, that has been locked in from day one with this ball club. And now continues to say all the right things, do all the right things in the field. And he swings and misses. He strikes out for out number one. And it really has been a great pleasure to watch him do his thing. Let's take another look. And Sammy, who has already broken a window in the yellow building across the street, hits it by the building this time. For Southwest Airlines, they estimated at a very happy 480 feet, grossly underestimated, might I add, but Sammy will take it. So here comes Mickey. And uh, heads up to all you military folks out in San Diego when we head to town. Nothing against your pitching staff. It's outstanding, but just in case, you all might want to bring a glove to left field. <laughs> and right field and center field. Man, oh man. Roger Maris moves over as Sammy Sosa joins him at 61, and now he's one behind. Mighty Mark McGuire, the Cardinals and the Astros play tonight at the Dome. Take a look at that. Two men in the same season have eclipsed 60. And you know, we said it at the time, Chip, quite obviously all the accolades heaped on Mark McGuire, and a lot of people were calling him the home run king and the man who had set the record there was no doubt about that but it was almost like posting a score as the leader in the clubhouse in a golf tournament you post a score but you've got some guys left out on the course 
one of those guys, Sammy Sosa, still in pursuit, and now he's just one back. Ground ball right side, and not to take anything away from McGuire, I wouldn't dream of doing that. That moment, he was the first man that broke the record. No doubt about it, he deserves the accolades. He deserves the wonderful attention that he so rightly deserved and got. But I wonder what the reception will be for Sammy Sosa if he ends up with more home runs for then he will be the record holder, not Mark McGuire. And frankly, I don't think Sosa's gotten nearly as much attention, nearly as much notoriety as McGuire because Big Mac has led all season long. And he was the man, along with Ken Griffey, that everybody said in spring training, if this expansion year is indeed going to be the year, it'll be a battle between Griffey and McGuire to see who breaks it. Well, it happened to be McGuire. But very few people gave Sammy, whose leading home run year was 40 going into this year, any chance. Well, he's knocking at the door, folks. And we still, being at game number just 150, with 12 to go after today, have enough time where both of these guys could be in the mid or upper 60s before it's over. And I want to be very clear, I'm not criticizing McGuire at all for this perceived lack of attention for Sammy Sosa. I think really Sammy has probably preferred it that way. Morandini hooks that ball deep down the right side. And he just missed hitting a home run. But I will say that I just hope that the fans of our game, if Sosa hits one, two, three, however many more home runs in McGuire at the end of the year, Gives him the kind of celebration, the kind of accolades, the kind of reception that Mark McGuire so richly deserved because he will too. Two balls, two strikes to Mickey. And again to first. Like McGuire, Sammy Sosa is the right man at the right time to be another hero for this game of baseball. And there are the big checks. Just one behind Mac. At 61. With the wind blowing out and a long way to go in this one. So today might be the day. He's hit nine homers against Milwaukee. Now has Sosa. Morandini ground ball up the middle. Good play, Loretta. Feed you barehand. Head to first, not in time. Brewers thought they turned it, and Vigna did everything he could to try to turn it but Mickey hustled down the line to keep the inning alive. We've seen Brett Boone do this with the bare hand. Now Fernando Vina steps on the bag throws to first. And Bob Davidson said it was a step late. So the inning stays alive. But the Cubs have put eight on the board and lead by five. Scott Service, one for two. And a slider for a strike. They go to the top of the ninth in Montreal. Mets one, Expos nothing. Montreal shut out on three hits so far in that game. They 0 1 to Scotty, 0 and 2 now. Cubs got six in the third after trailing two to nothing. Milwaukee scored a run in the fourth. The Cubs with two here in the fifth on a massive mammoth. Sammy Sosa home run, his 61st of the year. They may have to rename it, folks, to Sosa Street. Well, that ball went down Kenmore Avenue. Swing and a miss, service strikes out. And the inning is over. Sammy got number 61. Will there be another? Only time will tell. Cubs eight. Milwaukee three. My man John. We go to the sixth inning. They are roaring for Sammy. And indeed, his magic number to catch Mark McGuire is now one. The Cubs' magic number for winning this game 
is 12. That's how many outs they need. It's an 8-3 ball game as Traxel trying to win for the 15th time this year. And Traxel will face the 3-4-5 spot in Phil Garner's Milwaukee lineup here. Sammy is now homered in every game of the series. So after going five games without a home run, he's exploded against the Brewer pitching staff, a staff that he's just decimated this entire season. He's hit nine home runs against Milwaukee. That's more than any other team. And he'll face them two more games plus half of this one. No balls and a strike to Nilsson. Let's pause quickly for identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Sammy Sosa's 61st home run has electrified the crowd here at Wrigley Field. And that is the 61st home run ball from Sosa. John Witt is the man who picked it up, the 2-0, 2-1. the last one there was no doubt about this one look how far Chris this baby went past the yellow house went down the street went down Kenmore that's it, what I thought it missed the building when we go to the eighth inning Cubs have an 8-5 lead on Beanie Baby Day at the ballpark again our thanks to the folks at Ty Incorporated Terry Mulholland goes to work here against Nilsson Cirillo and Burnett's very tough part of the order for the Brewers my name Chip Carey along with Steve Stone and the man who caught lucky number 61 in the booth with us, John Witt, is the man that, well, risked life and limb to catch number 61. What was the scene like out in the uh, out beyond the ballpark in, in left field when that ball came your way? It was a, a pretty much a zoo. I mean, people all over the place. I was standing back and just got a, a good bounce. <laughs> you caught it on a bounce. You didn't catch it on the fly. Come on, man. But but you said that it did go by the building on a fly. It hit about two feet past the corner of the building on the fly. Well, that is a tremendous home run. Sprayed foul two and two. And I guess the question on everybody's lips now is it's number 61. Sammy still trails McGuire by one. What are you going to do with the baseball? I'd, we're going to talk to Sammy. You know, I'd, I'd love to give it back to him and, and, and work something out with him there. But, you know, McGuire's sitting on 62, so is it really worth worth that, that much, you know? It's, well, I haven't are, really thought about it. There are only three men now in the history of the game who have hit 61 home runs or more. Exactly. And you've got the ball that. And it's not something that happens of, every day. No question about that. Three and two to Nilsson. Ground ball foul and out of play. You had to jump in a car for safety, huh? Was that crazy out there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I put the ball in my glove and three guys that are regulars out there just took me off and, and away I was. I was in the van. Well obviously you didn't fumble. Have you given any thought about maybe going over to the Bears and trying out the <laughs> tailback or something? <laughs> Probably couldn't do much worse but. Uh, foul ball again by Nilsson who is 0 for 3. Yeah, I think the thing he had to avoid was a blindside blitz where somebody <laughs> knocks the That's ball out of your glove. That's why everybody was around me out there. <laughs> where you know, are you from, John? Are you, are you from Chicago? I'm from Dixon, the hometown of Ronald Reagan. Oh, outstanding. And how did you come about uh, being at the ballpark today? Just wanted to see a part of history, or did you have well, tickets? I was at a, I was at the, a party about eight blocks away last night, and I'm like, you need to go to the game. I have no idea why I was supposed to come or what. It just, it just happened. Well, there was the scene a few moments ago after you caught the baseball in the car for safety. There's the record, number 61 home run ball. Stoney's going to hold it, and he's served up a few of those himself as well. It's well I have it right here, Chip, and, and there is a scuff on the baseball where it obviously hit the cement after it went by the building. But why don't you hold it up and show it to the folks? <clears throat> the historic number 61. So John all your friends and family down in Dixon they ought to be awfully proud of you catching that ball on the bounce. Congratulations and hope your meeting with Sammy Sosa goes well after the ball game. Thanks. All right John Witt congratulations. Thanks for talking about it with us. And hopefully you and Sammy can get together afterwards and he can get the souvenir and you can get something nice as well. And look at the fans every man woman and child on their feet all around the ballpark the biggest crowd of the year greeting Sammy Sosa almost 41,000 here today.
Cubs have drawn 2.46 million fans. And with three more home games, should go over 2.5 million. Plunk sets. What a cut. It's 0-1. Pedro Valdez in the on-deck circle. He'll hit after Sammy. If he can keep it alive, it'll be Gaetti. And the crowds are getting bigger across the street. They can't get any bigger in the ballpark. The 0-1. Again, it bounces up there. Same pattern to Sosa as we saw with Grace. Hopefully we'll see a different result. Mark McGuire with 62 homers. Sammy Sosa with 61. And we have two weeks to go in the season. Who will win the race? The stretch, the 1-1. One -one. He laid off outside. 2-1. Look at those folks waiting for number 62. The net's almost unfair. The 2-1. Swap on, there she goes. Number 62. Move over, Big Mac. You got company. in St. Louis as was Sammy Sosa when he got to 62 first said wouldn't it be something if we both finished tied? well I don't think they're going to stop at 62 but right now with the Cardinals having a game to play 
Batman and Mark McGuire are the home run kings this season. Later on in that game when McGuire hit historic number 62, he went to first base and he said to McGuire, don't get too far ahead, wait for me. Well, you know it wasn't intentional, but Big Mac has waited, and Sammy has kept on coming to the point now where they're tied, and that's his family, his brothers calling home to commemorate this moment, and it just plain sends chills up your spine. You just wonder when for both McGuire and Sosa the enormity of what they are doing will catch up to them. Well, they have erased every other competitor in the history of this game, and those two stand alone as they both now will streak to the finish line. Who's going to win it is anybody's guess. But there's only two left, and one is wearing red, and one is wearing blue. Ironically, the same colors on our symbol of pride, old glory, and the same colors on the Dominican flag as well. What a job by the grounds crew here at Wrigley Field to clean off the debris, the fans in jubilation. And again, Sosa continues just to concentrate on the ball game. And now, fans, there's a game to be won, and it's Henry Rodriguez who's going to come on to pinch hit with Gary Gaetti in the on-deck circle. And the Cubs looking for at least one more run. And that young man wearing the Sosa shirt. And look at the dad. Will remember this game forever. And look at the dad in tears. That's what... This game's all about, folks. He's human after all. Henry sent a rocket right center field. That ball is off the wall. Henry hobbling towards second. He's going to make it with a double and a tying runs on. this keep happening I remember what he once said in I think the fourth game of the year in 1964 he the Cardinals were going to win the pennant that year if this continues you just think maybe it's our year well this wasn't as dramatic at the Kirk Gibson home run but Henry Rodriguez essentially on one leg it's a double and then hobbles in a second now Jason Maxwell carrying the tying run is on second base as a pinch runner Gaiety tried to check it and could not. This is unbelievable. Rod Beck is in the bullpen, hoping that the Cubs win it as you look at Jason Maxwell carrying the tying run. If you can't outpitch him, try to outslug him. The stretch now, the 0 1. He didn't go 1 and 1. What a privilege. We have seen two men hit their 62nd homers in the span of a little more than a week. One ball, one strike. Strike, two called on the outside corner. As the players and the fans try to rein in their emotions because there is a game to be won and a huge game for the Cubs. There wasn't much doubt about either of those home oh, runs. Man. They were exploded. One, two. Bouncing ball up the middle base hit. Maxwell rounds in. He's going to score and we are tied. Oh, baby, listen to this place. And not a beanie 
Well, when you only have one save, and it's Eric Plunk with only one, it's really tough to shut down the opposition. And Plunk has been unable to do that. Spurred on by the home run by Sammy Sosa, a double by Rodriguez, Gary Gaetti comes through again, his third run driven in today. Mickey sprays that ball foul. Boy, you, you wonder the way Gaetti's been playing for the Cubs. When he takes off that uniform shirt, if there's not a big S tattooed on his chest, he has been Superman. He's unbelievable. He's at first with one out. The 0-1. Off speed high. Well, Grandpa, wherever you're watching, man, oh man. One ball, one strike. The stretch. The pitch. He flirted with a double and almost picked off Tom Gambo. One and two. And for that man, Phil Garner. Another slugfest that he has seen. Battled back to even keel. One and two. Punk ready. Here it is. Oh, he swung at a slider in on his thumbs, and he's out number two. But here's Tyler. And here comes Phil Garner. He's going to the pen, and it's going to be Mike Myers. Well, Chip, back in... The the glory years of the Philadelphia Phillies. It was Tug McGraw with the saying, you gotta believe. And the more you see of this Cub team, and the more you see of Sammy Sosa and the rest of this offense, you gotta believe, certainly could become one of the trademark phrases of this team. Matt Mieske will come out to try to do in his former mates. As Mike Myers comes into the ball game. Well, so, I mean, talk all you want about the home runs. What's excited me most about this incredible chase of McGuire and Sosa are the shots that the producers and the directors have gotten for you. Sammy Sosa weeping, the fans weeping, holding their children. The pop and the hop from Sammy. The banners, the signs, the resurgence of our game. And the raw emotion that people, when they leave the ballpark, are incredibly, completely, totally exhausted when the day is done. And for Southwest Airlines, historic number 62 went 480 historic feet. And the way Sammy keeps getting those guys airtime, they ought to give him a jet. <laughs> Take another look at it. Sammy got every bit of this. And that started the Cubs on the comeback trail here in the ninth inning, just like he did yesterday. Only yesterday it was a base hit. Today it was historic number 62. A hero a day. And for many, many days, it's been Sammy Sosa who now has belted 10 home runs this year against Milwaukee. And don't forget, when you think about adding up the final totals, He's got two more games against these guys in Brew City. Starting off the final road trip of the year. He's answered more curtain calls than Luciano Pavarotti. And he has indeed performed 62 beautiful arias this year. Here on WGN. And there's still a scrum going on for the ball. 62, baby! 62. So here is Manny. We go to the 10. It's 10 to 10. He's the man of the hour, Sammy Sosa with a couple of jacks. 10 to 10 as we head to the 10th. 
Matt Mieske stays in the game. He'll play left field for the Cubs. Sandy Martinez behind the plate to catch. And Rod Beck will work against the lower third of the Brewers order in the in the top half of the tenth. And Stoney, you get the impression whoever has the last swing is going to win this ball game. And that fortunately would be the Cubs. They're the home team. What a ball game. If any of you had the foresight to get this one on videotape, send us a copy. <laughs> this one's worthy of keeping in the archives, as was yesterday's game. Grace two out of five today with a double. Two up, two down. Grace sends a drive. Deep right. That ball game is over. Cubs win. The Cubs win. dramatic moments and historic moments. It finally ends so appropriately on a home run. Only this time it wasn't Sammy Sosa. This time it was Mark Grace hitting his 16th. Three hits today. The final one ending a great comeback by the Cubs who have kept their one game lead in the wild card and the fans refusing to go home. Fitting is it on Gracie the Swan Beanie Baby that he takes the Swan Song with the game winning homer. The Cubs will maintain their wild card lead. Sammy Sosa has hit 61 and 62. And folks, it's a shame we got to head west to San Diego.